Hello everyone, this is me again. I'm Cyber Human Reviews, back again with another um Doctor Who overview video. And today I'm going to be overviewing my least favourite Doctor from the classic series, Peter Davison. Um, nay, to be honest, out of every single Doctor, Peter Davison's Doctor is probably the only one who's bad. I'd say because I like. I like, I like Colin Baker, I like Sebastian McCoy, Tom Baker, William Hartnell, Patrick Strait and John Partway. The only one I don't really like is is um Peter Davison because he's just really bland he is and he just doesn't feel like the Doctor. He's too nice and he hasn't got any stun side to him and no like, you know, like, like you know, no dark side or anything. He's just a bit, I don't know. He's, he's just not really, it doesn't feel like the Doctor to me. Uh, yeah. He's probably like the only actor to play the Doctor who doesn't feel like the Doctor. No, actually, actually, I'll take that back. He does feel like the Doctor, but he feels like a very weak version of the Doctor. So, yeah, anyway, let's get right into this. So, we ended off with Logopolis, where the Doctor got knocked off of a radio telescope by the Master and regenerated. Um, and this ends off the New Beginnings trilogy, which was the only trilogy set over two seasons, with um, Castro Valva. Now, I really like... Um, hey, this story starts off, I like that they're in the TARDIS and, like, the regeneration's gone kind of wrong and that they're heading towards the biggest bang in history and stuff and all of that. And it's, you know, it's quite suspenseful, quite terrifying because the Doctor can't do anything because he's, like, unconscious and then, like, the companions can't do anything because they don't know how to control the TARDIS. It's very suspenseful. But then when they actually get to Castro Valva, it gets really boring and really naff. Um, 5 out of 10, because the first half's good and the second half's bad. It makes sense, doesn't it? Fall to Doomsday. This is probably the fifth Doctor at his worst, because this was the first one they filmed. Um, they filmed this before Cash Revolver, um, and he's obviously hasn't got into the role at all yet. Um, yeah. Uh, it's all right, it is. I'm not going to call it Guilty Pleasure, because I don't love it. But I do quite like it. I don't think it's bad, like people say. I like the concepts and the ideas. Uh, I'll give it a six and a half. It's all right, it is. Kinder from the Hit or Miss Mara Tells box set. Um, now, I actually kind of like this one. I actually quite like this one. I like how it's really psychedelic, really weird. But then it's also it's also quite fun, it is. It's strange, but it's fun. And I, I can, I can, I, you know, I can... I can live for this story. I quite like it. I'll give it like a seven and a half. It's I hate the design of the Mara. It looks stupid, but it's just got weirdness. But then it doesn't take itself too seriously. So it's quite quite a fun, but then quite dark story in some places. It's like a well balanced story. The visitation. Um, no, I think this one's a bit overrated because some people say it's like a nine or ten i wouldn't say that i don't really see why there was a special edition released on it it's not like one of the the main doctor who stories like i don't know why they've done a special edition for this and they're not done for like pyramids of mars or like i don't know horror of fang rock even though i don't think horror of fang rock's great it is popular so make more sense to do that one than this one but yeah i quite like this one i love the designs of the pterolaptals it also explains a really important bit of history which i'm not going to say because it kind of spoils the whole thing eight out of ten for that one black orchid um now peter davison and sarah sutton hated filming this story because it was really boring it was i quite i quite enjoy this one i think it's a nice quick two-parter it's it's quick you know it's fun, it's good. If it was longer, I'd hate this story. If this if this was longer than two parts, I would I would I would despise this story. But I like it, I do. It's a nice quick little like two parter to like bridge the gap between um visitation and aftershock. It is. Oh yeah, by the way, I just want to say I've got to say this. Fall to Doomsday, Adric's really annoying in this one. So if you hate Adric, this is him at his worst in this story. Anyway, talking about Adric, we've got um Aftershock. He's well not departure, he's um killing off. They they just kill him. He's he's one of the only companions to get killed. He's like which other ones? There was um what's it, Katarina from like William Hartnell who was killed and what's her name? I can't I can never remember her name. I can't remember her name, but it was the other one from Dalek's Master Plan. Um Aftershock nearly gets a ten. Um but I don't think it's like brilliant like everyone says it's I think it's really good, but not 
like a 10 out of 10 brilliant it's, the, it's very close to getting a 10 but it's not quite there this is a great sideman story i wish that Aftershock shock and revenge of the sidemen were switched around so half shot could have been their their big return after what six years of of, of six since uh, look, look the, the last episode before um revenge of the sidemen was the invasion which is my favorite sideman story and this would be a great way to bring them back but sadly they use revenge of the sidemen for some reason which is even though it's like it's a guilty pleasure of mine it's still i can it still is it is terrible but i'd like it anyway it's weird um but yeah um off shock um, 9 out of 10, and that's not just because it kills for Vadrick, it's genuinely a really good story, and it's written by Eric Seward, who, um, I think wrote on Visitation as well, yes he did, and, um, I don't know, did he write this one, no he didn't, but yeah, he wrote those two, which, you know, it's nice, so you're thinking, right, so, the, um, Peter Davison, like, season 19, doesn't start off too great, but it does get quite good, and it's got a very good story right here. And you think, oh, his hero's is going up after like se season 18 and he destroyed Doctor Who. It's like building it back up. You think that until you watch the final story from season 19, Time Flight. First of all, they put no time into the cover. I know loads of people have said this, but just look at it. It looks disgusting. But it's just... BBC well, didn't do a very good job on this one. Um, also, for some reason, they've put that all of a sudden. Apparently, somehow they've changed the numbers. No. Um, yeah, I like the idea, the concept of this. Um, but then, like, the, the like, well, first thing that annoys me is it's set, like, seconds after Aftershocks happened. After Aftershocks happened. And literally, the doctor goes, oh, uh, when to find that Ad Adric side, he goes, oh, well, we wouldn't want to mourn, he wouldn't want us to mourn him unnecessarily, and just moves on, which is incredibly disrespectful, even though I hate, hate Adric, but still. Um, also, the thing I really don't like is that they just, they take what is a quite an interesting idea and try and wrap the master into it for some reason. He's literally got no point of being in this story. They just try and wrap him around the plot and they fail really badly. Four out of ten. This is when, like, the Peter Davison era starts to go really downhill. It does pick up near the end, but for, like, a big chunk of his era from now, it is, it's just terrible story after terrible story. So, yeah, we start off season 20, which is a pretty naff season, to be fair. The last two stories are all right, but the other ones are pretty, yeah. They're pretty crap, they are. Um, Arc of Infinity... Um, another one with a terrible cover, you know, and TJ Productions said this, but yeah, I agree, Tegan does look high. Um, yeah, this takes one of my favourite villains, um, Omega, and, um, turns him into just some generic alien monster when he's really supposed to be this Time Lord who's, like, who, who created the Time Vortex and now he's angry at his people because he got lost and stuff. And now he's just trying to take things over for no reason. One thing I do like is Colin Baker's in this story and he actually shoots Peter Davison, which is funny because Peter Davison regenerates into him. And I just find that kind of funny. It would have been funnier if this was Peter Davison's last story and he regenerates into Colin Baker. That would be funnier. Um, three out of ten, it just destroys one of the best villains in Doctor Who history who shouldn't have been brought back and should have just been left as a one-off villain or at least put in the five Doctors which was literally at the end of this season anyway next Snake Dance the sequel to Kinder um really bad this one is I hate this character played by the Doc Martin guy um the new design for the more is an improvement from the old from kinder but it's still pretty enough it's just like a, another psychedelic kind of story like kinder but just kind of ruined really it's just a, like a really naff like b-tech like i don't know painland version of kinder three out of ten really don't like that one and now we go on to probably the worst series, like the worst story arc in Doctor Who. And I thought East Space Trilogy was bad, but oh, it's, it's this is so much worse. Um, the Black Guardian Trilogy, the worst story arc in Doctor Who history. Mordred Undead. Um, this introduces Tarlo, 
who I quite like because he's a very different companion. He's quite selfish and he's got a lot of backstory. He's quite a developed character. I quite like Tana. I think he's an underrated companion. He isn't brilliant, but he's all right. It also brings back the Brigadier after not being in, and literally not being in a Doctor Who story since Terror of the Zygons. Look at look at the gap. That was his last one, and that's the one they... They, he missed out on all of this. He didn't bring him back for all of this. It was, it's a shame. They just, after John Park, we left, they kind of just threw him on the back burner and just said, that's it, mate, you've had it. Right. Um. Yeah, very average story. Like, probably the most average episode of Doctor Who ever. Five out of ten. Can't remember much from this. Incredibly boring, though. But very average. It's not bad. It's just very, very average. Five out of ten. Ooh, terminus. <laughs> only reason I give this one a 2 out of 10 and not a 0, because I only give one episode from each era a 0, if there is one. Um, The only reason I give it a 2 and not a 0 is because um, it gets rid of Nissos, the most boring companion ever. Um, uh, it's, All I remember from this story is that these these sick people have been put in this space quarantine and that's about it and they're all dying and it's really depressing um i can't remember anything else i can't even remember the black guardian being in this really the, it, it's just the two it's, i remember i remember being more bored than i was during more modern undead awful terminus is just awful i might you know um Actually, I don't know why it's called Terminus because I feel like I've got a terminal illness when watching this because it's that depressing. I might rewatch the Black Guardian trilogy mainly because I haven't watched it in years, so I can't really remember what happens in it. Uh, oh, but I can't remember. What I, I can sadly, sadly, I can remember what happens in this story. Enlightenment. What was this story? What I'm asking anyone who's watched this. What was this? All I can remember is that the Black Guardian just kind of messes about, even though he's so powerful he could just kill the Doctor in seconds, but he still just messes around anyway. And they're on literal pirate ships in space. You, If you thought Voyage of the Dam from the new series was stupid with, like, the Titanic in space, this is even worse. It has got pirate ships with, with sails, with sails in space. No engines, just sails. Hey, does... It's 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 literally it's oh it's it's oh it's one out of ten it's awful it is really bad. The only reason I don't give this one a zero is because there's one story in the Peter Davison era that's worse than this one, and I, I think you I think everyone who's watched watched the one I'm on about knows which one I'm on about. It's one of these ones here, and it's it's obvious which one it is. Obviously, 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 obviously. There you go. Um, the King's Demons. A nice, ref a nice refresh from all of this rubbish that we've had. A nice little refresh. It's nothing special, but it just seems so much better than it really is because it's just come after all of that gunk there, all that filth. Um, yeah, the King's Demons. Um, it's a nice little two-parter. The Master's a lot better in this one. Introduces Chameleon, who's apparently a companion, even though, for, like, these five stories, he just kind of stays in the Doctor's cupboard. And then just suddenly, we just remember he exists in that one. Um, Yeah, nice little two-part, a 7 out of 10. It's it's a lot better. It's probably the first good good story from um season 20. And then we have the, um, the big finale. The Five Doctors. Um, Not as good as the Three Doctors, um, which is brilliant i just love this one so much the three doctors um yeah this one i, I quite like it it's all right. i'll probably give it a seven and a half i think richard Arndell's william hartnell he's terrible it's william hartnell but i like the story and i love you know the third doctor and the second doctor being together again it's so funny just to see them bicker at each other all the time and it's it's just it's just really funny that that's probably the best thing about the story and then yeah, it's it's like a seven and a half. It's not the best, like special, really. Here we go. Here we go. Warriors of the Deep. This is, if you didn't guess, which I'm surprised, is the worst um Doctor Who story 
one, no, not the worst Doctor Who story of all time. That goes to the Leisure Hive. The second worst Doctor Who story of all time, and the one that gets a zero. It's the story is interesting, but it's destroyed by terrible dialogue, and I mean god awful dialogue. Um, some of the worst costume designs in the show's history, probably worse than the costume designs in the Web Planet, and that's an achievement if you're able to make worse costumes than the ones in the Web Planet. Um, some of the worst acting, and and I'm dead serious about this, the worst ending to any Doctor Who story ever. And even though I hate, even though I hate Leisure Hive more than this, the ending for this one, even though the ending is god awful, is better than the one from Warriors of the Deep because the end is just so sudden. All it pretty much, if it, I'm not, I'm, I don't care to spoil this because I'm just saying, don't watch this episode. I may as well spoil it. Um, it pretty much, pretty much, they kill them and the doctor just goes there should have been another way and then it just ends flat out just ends like that it is there's none of them like he's going off in the tardis it's like the second he says that the people cut and just gave up on this story it's actually kind of funny thinking about it they just kind of gave up uh zero out of ten not talking about it any longer i can't i literally feel a bit sick now after talking to them about that and this is this is when the Peter Davison era goes goes back back uphill after season twenty being a massive disaster. We've got some some of the best episodes of Doctor Who are in these five. So yeah, the Awakening another nice two part. Uh, one of the actually yeah, the last proper two part because like what Attack of the Cybermen and Time Time Lash. And the like, Vengeance on Varos, they're two parters, but each episode's forty five minutes, which because they changed up like the um the way that the episodes were shown. This is the last proper two parter. Um, to be fair, I mean I'm gonna give this one a six out of ten because there's a lot in this story and it's really interesting. There's a lot in it, but they just speed through all of it way too quickly. They do. They this should have been four parts. It's the only two parter where it should have been longer. Because there's just too much in the story to just show and it just speeds through everything. Alright, story though. 6 out of 10. Frontios with the Tractators. One of my favourite villains in Doctor Who. The Tractators. I love them. Th this is a very personal story for like like Tarlo and stuff. Because the Tractators destroyed a lot of his species and stuff. This is probably one of the most bleak Doctor Who stories. And when you get to like the end the Peter Davison era. His episodes just get really dark they do. Um, yeah, very grim story. Love it though. 9 out of 10. Brilliant. Resurrection of the Daleks. As everyone knows. It has a higher death count than Terminator. And, um, yeah, it is probably the dark, no, not the darkest, but it would be in the top five darkest Doctor Who stories of all time. It has, um, Lytton, who reappears in Attack of the Cybermen, but I'll get to that in the next video. Um, and it's got Davros at his darkest, and it's got the Daleks at their most creepiest. A very disturbing story, but great. And they get to the penultimate well actually it's also the departure of tegan as well forgot to mention that planet of fire which is the departure of tarlo and um chameleon even though he ain't really a companion is he um uh, this also introduces perry who i think's quite good i like perry apart from like the jod the, the, the joddy the um what's it called the um what do i mean what am i on about the um the dodgy <laughs> the dodgy american accent um, she's quite good. She is. I don't know why they made her American. There was no point of that, but she's she's quite good. Um, and I actually quite liked her and the Fifth Doctor together, even though they were only in like two episodes. Um, yeah, very good one. I can't really remember this one too much. It's like a seven and a half. It's all right, and it's not as dark as like the story surrounding it. And now we have what should have been the end of season twenty one, but sadly wasn't, and it was ended by. A certain um piece of garbage that I haven't bought yet, haven't bought yet, because I'm dreading it. Um, Caves of Androzani. This is like the end of Robert Holmes's like you know like his um this his endless hit era, which I think any 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 Robert Holmes story that was written during Spearhead from Space or Caves of Androzani are good. He didn't write really except for like Power of the Crawl, obviously, but. 
it, this is like the end of his good bit because this is when it's coming to like the end of his life because he died a couple of years after this his last few stories aren't the best even though i quite like this one but i'll get to it um he's this is brilliant it is this is easily um peter davison's um fifth doctor at, at his best if he was like this through all of his seasons I would actually quite like his doctor. This is when his doctor suddenly becomes really cynical and like um, you know, cynical and almost like you know, br really brave and stuff like like the cliffhanger for part three. It, it just shows how brave the doctor can be, and it's he. This is him at his best easily. He's just like he's so cynical and he feels so much like the doctor. And I wish he was like that in his other episodes. And it's a shame that he only just figured out how how his doctor should have been played. At, in his last story the regeneration is the best regeneration and yeah everything's brilliant about the story the only 10 out of 10 from the peter davison era so yeah guys um that was the peter davison era quite a short one but nowhere near as short as um the next two coming up the last two from the classic series anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be doing the colin baker era next once i've got the last three stories i haven't completed his era yet so yeah guys anyway yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one